The story starts with a fortune teller who had never seen such incredible luck before. If the person were to buy a lottery ticket 10 times, they would win 20 times because that's how lucky they are. The title of the story is at the bottom of the screen. RMC sighed, it's such a sin to have so much money. However, even if she has a lot of money to perhaps buy an entire continent, her love fortune is undergoing a drought. Welp, you win some and lose some am I right? But the problem is, our MC is already engaged for love and not an arranged marriage. The fortune teller evaporates the small oasis spring of her desert-like love fortune. Because our MC isn't buying her dry love fortune, the fortune teller won't take her money today. Instead, if her words turn out to be true, she hopes our MC pays her then. Our MC walked out from the dreaded fortune teller shop, her fortune reading haunting her. All will be well when she sees her fiancé, right? Even if there's an unknown carriage in front of his abode it should be okay, right? Apparently not, because she caught her fiancé half-naked with a woman in his bed. The man used up all his one brain cell to wiggle his way out of his affair. He pinned it to be normal to be half-naked with his sister's guest on bed because she spilled a drink. Without an ounce of shame, he reprimanded RMC for showing up unannounced. He wanted her to have manners first even after he clearly had an affair. Finally, our MC broke into tears, she had to accept the fact that her love fortune was indeed dry. Our MC Ilya was already born into a wealthy Count Bloden family, yet, after she was born, she made every business they dabble a huge success with her luck. She always won first place in lotteries, picked gold coins on streets and had special treatments in restaurants. In addition to that, she is marrying her first love, Ray Hart. However, that love life came crumbling down like Jenga blocks. All her effort to be his ideal type, all flushed down the drain. By the way, I hope everyone listening, to be yourself and don't alter your beautiful personality to match your partners. Anyways, our MC realized that what she's doing is just being a pushover. She realized that the man is treating her like an ATM machine, so she will stop being said ATM and break off this engagement. Suddenly, Ilya remembered the fortune teller's words of paying her later. She opened her wardrobe which is mostly tailored to Ray Hart's tastes and sighed. She came back to her home, and comforted the worried knights whom she didn't see for a whole month. It has been so long since she came back home and she wanted to apologize to her family as well. But for now, she will go to the bank, cash out, let passerbys drool at her wealth and drop down this bag of gold coins in front of the jaw-dropped fortune teller. Ilya thanked the dumbstruck fortune teller for saving her life and also wanted her love fortune re-rad. Our girl does have a destined male lead for her, though he has a doomed fate but meeting her will definitely save him. The fortune teller urged her to go west to meet her noble fated partner. After that, our girl went on a shopping spree for new outfits that are not tailored to Rayhart's tastes. Her escort knights complimented her excellent taste in fashion. As for the Rayhart taste outfits she wore before, she would like them to be burnt. Ah, I'm happy that she is quick to move on and not cling to the good for nothing jerk. After that, she went to a music box shop for a family present. She had been so into Rayhart that she ignored her family and their advice. While she was dissing the products that were clearly overpriced, someone came into the shop. The tall, muscular man has black hair and blue eyes. He's a rare handsome man in our MC size, but he looks fierce. Suddenly, the saleswoman picked up the overpriced product with cheap handiwork and promoted it to the handsome man. Our MC thought that no one would fall for this blatant sales lie, but clearly the man is the biggest pushover she had ever seen. Seeing that there's a big pushover in front of her, the saleswoman pushed more of the products towards the man, literally. Our MC couldn't handle the scam in front of her and saved the big pushover. Ilya wanted the man to speak for himself but upon seeing the man sends chills down her spine. Even though she's scared, she still remembers the bitter taste of being unable to refuse things. Ilya sincerely wanted to help the man. However, the saleswoman doesn't want to release the big fish she caught and said that the prices are decided by the boss, and mocked them in a roundabout way of being poor. Our wealthy MC has a bone to pick with this one. The boss was called in and documents were sent to Ilya. From now on, Ilya is the boss of this shop. Our MC can now set the price to her liking. After all that commotion, the man bowed and thanked Ilya for helping him. Ilya suggested the man say no to such an absurd sales pitch. 
The man told her he is not used to saying no, a huge contrast to his scary face. RMC experienced the saying, don't judge a book by its cover firsthand. Ilya proceeded to recommend some music boxes after getting the man's consent. The man smiled lovingly and Ilya was kinda jealous of the owner of the gift. Before she exited the shop, the man tried giving her some gold coins as thanks for helping him. RMC declined, she didn't help him for compensation, besides, she is from the wealthy Bloden family. Since you've listened until here, why not, like, subscribe and share the video, much thanks. RMC thought about the fortune teller's suggestion on going west, but she still isn't aware that she had already met her fated partner. Upon arriving back at the Bloden Manor, her brother Haley Bloden was waiting for her. His sister's description of him is that he is the unrivaled prodigy in the empire and also a sweetie. He is a loving brother who takes care of his sister when their parents are busy. He even delayed his academy admission for her as he's worried for her. It was all sunshine and rainbows until the jerk Rayhart came into her love life. We come to the present with the brother reprimanding her for still sticking to Rayhart and buying gifts to please him. Ilya corrected him and explained that all these gifts are for herself. She admitted that she was wrong and immature all this time. She wanted to sincerely apologize to her family that was worried for her. Haley hated Rayhart from the start as his brotherly instincts kicked in. He tried to stop his sister but she chose to rebel. Only now she realized that he always cared for her and she was the one who ignored her family's affections, simply because she was blinded by love. She wanted to tell her brother everything that happened a month ago but she wanted to hold the explanations until she's ready. Though, she firmly stated that she wants to cancel the wedding. Haley was dumbstruck, RMC explains that she and Rayhart had some disagreements and she didn't want to get married during this period. Without much questions, her understanding brother will contact Marquis Taroyan for her. But, Ilya wanted to speak to Rayhart and her parents herself. She reassures him to not worry and the brother obliged. After that conversation, both of them sunk into the depths of awkward silence. Our MC tried to break the awkwardness by gifting her brother the music box she bought just now. The brother just stared at the music box with no reaction. After that, Ilya excused herself as she had something to do. When Haley was alone, he let out a small smile and muttered a thanks for the cute music box. Outside, our MC knows that no matter how wealthy her count family is, they are still lower than the Marquis family in social standing, as Ishtar Empire is based on social hierarchy. To add to that, the current crown prince's fiancé is the niece of Marquis Taroyan. She cannot really make use of the scandal because the Bloden family relationship with the Imperial Palace is already strained. Furthermore, Marquis Taroyan is Haley's direct superior. Thus, to break this engagement smoothly, she needs help from someone with a higher social standing than the Marquis. Her worries were heard by the heavens and an opportunity arose with the party invitation at the Imperial Palace. At night, Ilya stared at a gold button-like accessory placed safely in her box. She recalled the day she nearly drowned and was saved by a man. She couldn't clearly see his face but she fell in love with this man with sunset red hair. Girl, I really think that it's a black-colored hair. Anyways, she felt warmth then but not anymore, she thought Rayhart would come to apologize and beg for forgiveness, but alas, he didn't even bother to visit or send one piece of letter. But who cares about the jerk, our MC is way over this trash. Since the trash likes to party, she guessed that he would attend this imperial palace party too. Ilya wanted to personally return this button to her supposed savior. Time skipped to the imperial palace invitation, everyone was smitten to see Ilya's 10 out of 10 beauty. Her fashion sense did a 180 that no one recognized her, everyone, except for this redhead trash over here. He even acted like no affair had ever happened. He has a 10 out of 10 shamelessness for real. Because the man is still as trashy as trash can get, Ilya wanted to return this button to him and get over her love ASAP. Suddenly, she heard people talking about the young Duke Evanthean. Karhan Evanthean was the second son who had been hidden in the shadows, she heard that he overthrew his older brother and became the successor. A bloodthirsty killer on the battlefield with no mercy or tears. Most of the man's rumors are negative, like having a bad personality or driving away his brother due to ambition. Either way, our MC never saw the man nor is his face visible to her right now. Before she could continue trying to return the button to Rayhart, 
people suddenly came buzzing around the two. One of the nobles recognized Ilya even though her style changed, and the shameless Rayhard dared put his grubby mitts around our girl. Since Ilya is here, the nobles came to ask for special treatment in her name, this ass Rayhard is still flaunting her wealth like it is his own. Thankfully, our girl slapped his grubby mitts and coldly declined. She told Rayhart, since he said he would lend all of that, he should lend it himself. With that, our MC walked away, leaving Rayhart shouting for her. Our girl is downing one whole bottle of alcohol at the terrace, she was annoyed that she couldn't return the button to Rayhart. Tears started to form around her eyes as she tried to toss this piece of accessory. Abruptly, the terrace door opened, stopping her. A man in mostly black intruded her space, he looked like he had the run of his life for real. Both of them looked at each other in shock, Ilya recognized this man but what is he doing here? The man awkwardly apologized, he knew someone was here but he just needed a place to hide ASAP. He tried leaving but our MC stopped him. She permitted him to stay and he thanked her. Ilya looked at the statue of a man who was clearly blocking the entranceway. She knows that he is afraid that she might feel uncomfortable but she doesn't know whether she should call him upright or considerate. The man proceeded to apologize for trying to compensate her last time. Our MC confirmed that he is indeed an upright man. She asked why he tried to compensate her, and he replied that there's no kindness without a cost. This poor man had been living the tough life of no kindness without compensation. Our MC told him that she is just doing him a favor and don't even think of compensating her with money. Our MC asked why he rushed to the terrace and the man was hesitant but told her his worries anyway. He was literally hiding from his soon-to-be fiancé because she is a rabid stalker. She will barge into his office if he doesn't reply to her messages, stage a coincidence after following him all the way, and get mad when he's with someone else, even guys. This man is scared shitless by this overly aggressive lady, imagine what will happen to him when she is officially his wife. Our MC suggested discussing it with his family and the man became even gloomier. To divert the sad topic, she told him that she has a fiancé that betrayed her. At that moment, that aggressive lady found her soon-to-be fiancé and look at the man so scared. The girl suddenly hugged his arm and reprimanded him for disappearing on her. She called him Evan Theon and our MC jaw dropped. The man who was being duped at the music box shop is the young Duke Evan Theon? The one who's said to be the murderer on the battlefield and has an awful personality? Our MC couldn't believe what she's realizing right now, and that aggressive girl also couldn't believe her eyes that her potential fiancé is with a woman. The aggressive lady recognizes Ilya but our MC doesn't remember who she is at all. She only knew this girl as the aggressive stalker judging by the young duke's reaction. Ilya felt bad for him but she will still excuse herself from this fight. However, the aggressive lady ain't letting her go. She said her name is Stella Delota but I will still call her aggressive lady. Our MC recognized this name, it was the family who stole the Bloden's carriage design and released it to the market first. There was no concrete evidence of them stealing, and they even claimed that they had prepared it for a few years. But all's well that ends well, the hasty new design of the Bloden that was chosen by Ilya surpassed the Delotas. Our MC recalled that the only daughter Stella Delota was a chonky girl but she lost a lot of weight to the point of Ilya failing to recognize her. Ilya wanted to avoid confrontation before but if it's regarding Delota, she will happily join the fight. And that's how the Karhan teddy bear got caught in the crossfire of giants. Stella was the one who dish out her mockery that Ilya's a fox trying to steal Karhan. Ilya countered that Stella lacks self-confidence to think that her man is easily taken. Our MC wanted her to cough out any evidence before making accusations. She at least need to catch them kissing or in the bed together like what she experienced a month ago. Besides, she isn't officially Carhan's fiancé either. Or perhaps, you don't trust the young duke? Ilya asked and the aggressive lady isn't so aggressive anymore. She timidly asked Carhan if he was angry, though the man's face is as stoically scary as ever and boy he is tall as hell. Before the man could reply, she shoved him and cried that she didn't do this because she doesn't trust him. With that, the aggressive stalker ran away. Our MC told him that the stalker started the fight first. Carhan complimented Ilya's confidence, our MC thought he's being sarcastic but he said he is envious of her confidence. Ilya stared at the successor of Evan Theon which is known as the top family among the nobles, 
he is supposed to be the most confident amongst everyone. Carhan said that he is unworthy of being the successor because of all the bad rumors surrounding him. Despite that, Ilya's first impression of him was completely different from the rumors. He is well-mannered, isn't boastful and is like a small bear stuck between a giant's fight. While she is misunderstood as an overly nice person, he is misunderstood as a bad person. Carhan asked if she's afraid of him, but why would Ilya be, as her first impression of him is rather pleasing. In fact, she might even be able to easily read his expressions. She told him that he isn't angry just now, but he was feeling flustered, and the man was shocked. Carhan fiddled his fingers, she was the first person who understood him properly. He is used to being misunderstood and it's rare for him to maintain a conversation. He suspected his gruesome face to be the problem. RMC suspected that she learned the wrong definition of the word gruesome. If Carhan's face is gruesome, then everyone in the empire could wear paper bags to cover their even gruesome faces. RMC tried surviving this Carhan sparkle and asked why he thought so. Everyone seemed to stiffen when they saw my face, the baby boy wilted. RMC suggested that he try to smile. He looks like a Yakuza boss with that villainous smile lol. Ilya thought that his current reputation is good for asserting dominance because people won't bully him as a pushover, besides, no one would dare say anything to hurt this big scary bear with a high social status. A light bulb popped up. Ilya walked towards him and offered to help him with his worries. She wanted to form an alliance with him, to break off their respective engagements. Carhan hoped to solve this the peaceful way but if he gets engaged with his aggressive stalker right now, she might even interfere with his breathing when they get married. Ilya told him to think about it and give her a reply in three days, at two o'clock at the central clock tower. Afterwards, she came out from the party. Although there's some trash moments during the party, it was still enjoyable. She just needed to take out the trash herself and it will be a beautiful world again. The next day, her brother instructed the maid to bring Ilya breakfast. She thought it might be awkward for them after that but he is still worried about her. She ate the food and it was heartwarming. After finishing, she thought that she should apologize and get along with Haley like the past. She will break off the engagement for the sake of her family. And to smoothly do that, Carhan's status is necessary. In exchange for his help, the Bloden could provide even more wealth than the Delota family. It's a win-win situation. However, Carhan needs to accept the deal first. Time skipped to the promised day, our MC had something to take care of so she is an hour early until the promised time. Yet, the young Duke Evan Theon is already there. Ilya thought that nobles are never a punctual species but this man is excessively diligent. She needed to postpone her business and greet him. Suddenly, she saw an old man's apples fall on the ground and Carhan helped pick one up. Nevertheless, his scary face made the old man grovel and begged for his apple to be spared. Because of that commotion, everyone started to pin Carhan as a bad person trying to rob food. Although Carhan is used to being misunderstood, that doesn't mean he's okay. The poor misunderstood teddy bear unhanded the apple and the old man ran for his life. Ilya greeted Carhan, she informed him that there's still an hour left until their promised time. The man just didn't want to be late, and our girl smiled. Even though he will be misunderstood, he would still help, and seeing he doesn't flaunt his noble authority, she deemed him a good-natured person 10 out of 10. She wondered how he kept that pushover personality hidden for such a long time. She suggested they switch places to talk. Ilya brought him to a coffee shop and they placed their orders. Carhan thought that she rented the place but apparently she owns the store. She bought all the nearby shops two days ago because she thought it would be a good base of operation. Ilya asked his reply to her proposal. The young duke fiddled his fingers and said that he is here to decline her offer. Our MC was shocked at the reply. Carhan said that he isn't the one who calls the shots whether his engagement stays or breaks, so he would have to turn down Ilya's proposal. Even though he said that, his face tells her otherwise. Ilya asked again and Carhan said he didn't want to cause trouble for his family. Bro, I do think if you tell them that you want to date the wealthiest family's daughter, they would immediately accept her with open arms LMAO. Anyways, Ilya wanted his own opinion and not from external factors. She will accept it if he himself wanted to get engaged with his aggressive stalker. 
The man hesitated, he didn't know if he was worthy enough to make decisions for his family. Ilya started her consulting class, she said that she was like him in the past, always following other people's opinions. However, she doesn't want to do that anymore, because it makes her unhappy. And if other people start dissing her about it, she will let them be, as they aren't the ones living life for her. Wow, this is such good life advice to have. If you're afraid to make decisions on your own, just say that I fooled you. If anything goes wrong, I'll take responsibility for it, RMC sure won my heart from saying that. Her life advice speech also seemed to work on the male lead. He doesn't want to bottle his feelings up anymore and will accept the proposal. To summarize the contract, they will act as lovers during this time period to break off their respective engagements. Karhan asked why they needed to choose this option. Ilya explained that it's because they have no clear reason to break off their engagements. She wanted to break off her engagement with Rayhart, but because his family is higher status than her and has connections with the Imperial family, she cannot casually break it off. That's why she needs Karhan's status as her shield. In addition, Rayhart is strong towards the weak and weak towards the strong, so he will be cautious if she is dating the young Duke Evanthean. On the Evanthean side, they wanted him to be engaged, and what better to have him date the wealthier Ilya Bloden rather than Stella Delota? They may oppose at the start but will eventually acknowledge her because she doesn't lack anything compared to Stella. The contract period is one year and Ilya will prepare countermeasures when it ends. What happens when you try to break the contract? Karhan asked. You'll know once you try, right? Ilya smiled and the teddy bear flinched. Our male lead thought about it and signed the paper. Their story will be, love at first sight. And just like that, the fake relationship that will shake the empire has begun. After sealing the deal, our MC noticed that Karhan lit up when he tasted the milk tea that was served. Ilya thought that people would definitely bully him if they knew his true personality. Although him being misunderstood is better for the act of her shield but since he agreed to her deal, she will help him with his problems too. First step to making him approachable, they need to change up his dress code first, since the man only had dark colored outfits. Ilya noticed that her supposed lover is doing such a great job in social distancing that will make the WHO proud during COVID period. She urged him to quickly walk beside her like a real lover would. Yeah, do it like this red-haired guy who even sticks to his lover even on a hot summer day. Rayhart being here coincidentally also startled this poor teddy bear. At least, Rayhart has his one brain cell to realize that he is openly having an affair and pushed his affair partner away. His one brain cell suggested he make an excuse that he came to give Ilya a gift and that girl is just his helper so he did. A gift for me? In an alley filled with men's clothing stores? Our MC has more brain cells than you you Rayhart dumbbutt. Ilya girled up and publicly told the dumb trash to stop making stupid excuses. Rayhart tried to redirect the blame towards her but our MC is very open to introducing her new lover, the young Duke Evan Theon, to Rayhart. The red-haired man instantly knew that he's outclassed. Furthermore, Carhan's the man with all the nasty deadly rumors. Ilya acted like a high school girl in love and said that they fell in love at first sight. Our girl gave Carhan a loving look, and the man smartly reciprocated. They look so good together. Rayhart tried to stop reality from sinking in but Ilya made reality sink in for him. Besides, he was the one who started abandoning her first. The dumb trash couldn't believe that Ilya would love someone else than him. Geez, this guy is too narcissistic for goodness sake. He recalled the Ilya who always prioritized him. He cannot let her be taken away like this. Ilya dropped another freeze bomb and told her fiancé to break off their engagement. The man tried to retaliate but our MC is firm with her decisions. Rayhart tried to lash out, but his flimsy arm was caught by Carhan as he glared at him. Rayhart's legs gave in and held in his pee. With that, the couple of the century left the Rayhart trash on the ground. The trash glared and cursed. After walking a few blocks away, Carhan lagged behind again and Ilya reeled him back by her side. She knows that he is flustered from meeting Rayhart and the man flinches. He is flustered because he didn't know if he did the correct thing by grabbing Rayhart's wrist. Looking at her teddy bear so flustered, she thanked him for helping her. After that, she commented that he needs to take acting classes. The love scene was good but it was really thanks to his fierce expression that the intimidation scene worked out. 
Ilya really wondered how he hid his personality until now. Meanwhile, the trash who picked himself up is downing alcohol and gaslighting himself. To Ilya, Rayhart is her benefactor. Well, benefactor or not, you started the fight first LMAO. Oh god, now we come into Rayhart's flashback arc. Let me breeze through it haha. He's the only son of Marquis Taroyan who has a high position in the Imperial Palace which he considers his playground. One day, he found an unconscious girl beside the lake and his life changed. So he picked up the glory of someone else's hard work. He realized that the unconscious girl is from the rich Bloden family. Ilya isn't his type but apparently her money and wealth is. So, he lied his way to luxury. Oh he did do research to gain her favor and after a few months, he got the legendary Ilya Fish. He is still despicable inside even in the past. They became engaged and on the verge of marriage but he couldn't suppress the Casanova inside him. He would other women with Ilya's money, and finally found the cream of his crop. Then, the cheating incident happened. He didn't care because he is so sure that Ilya cannot live without him. Welp, apparently she could. And there it is, the jealousy tactic that he coincidentally heard someone discussing. His one brain cell is so sure that Ilya did this just to make him jealous LMAO. Upon returning home, Ilya's escort knights are worried that she made a deal with the scary young Duke Evan Theon. But our girl is happy that he is her choice though. She was then greeted by her father, Cliff Bloden, and mother, Violet Bloden. The worried father came rushing down to meet his daughter. The strict mom wanted a private family talk. In the private family meeting room, the mom called the father who's clinging onto his daughter to sit beside her. Violet wanted Ilya to explain why she locked herself for a month. Ilya knows her family will confront Rayhart immediately if she mentions the affair, she needs some preparation before going against the entire Taroyan family. Ilya decided to start by apologizing to the family and stated that she wished to break off the engagement. She observed their reactions. Her mom looks like she was blessed by the heavens and her father agreed to her statement too. This family really hated that piece of narcissistic trash. Then came another nuclear bomb, she announced that she has a new lover. The parents started panicking that their daughter picked up yet another trash. Well, he isn't trash but the young Duke Evan Theon doesn't have the best reputation. Her father fainted and everyone panicked. Meanwhile, Carhan is misunderstood even in his house. He retreated into his room and looked at his inverted color scheme. They just changed from black to white LMAO. Carhan remembered that he had homework of practicing facial expressions, so he did, and the mirror cracked. The man felt sad. Even his mom hated his smile and his very own existence. Wow, if she's his biological mom then she is just bad at her job. Carhan finds it strange that Ilya could read his expression when even his mom failed. She helped him without needing anything in return, she proposed a contract to him and let him make his own decisions. She is doing a family's job better than his own family. Carhan always followed everyone's expectations but deep inside, he still felt frustrated. Whether to continue being swept away or wander aimlessly, but that time, a bright white hand was extended. This ignited something within him, he too wanted to change like her. Then, the teddy bear was startled by the knocks on the door. It was his aide, Tezsian Herben. Tessian instantly realized Carhan's inverted dress code. He likes how it looks on his lord, but he needs to wear dark colors to make him look less like a pushover. They are close enough to know Carhan's personality. Tessian also noticed the contract that was signed when he wasn't present to help. He is sure that Carhan was scammed. Tessian nagged and Carhan explained. The aide felt lightning and thunder raining down. At the midst of the nagging, Carhan said that it was his decision and Tez Sian went silent. It was not someone else's, nor a mistake, but Lord Carhan's own decision. Tez Sian said that he will accompany him in the next meeting to personally verify Ilya's intentions. On the day of the next meeting, Ilya pondered how she can get mutual consent of breaking off an engagement because it's needed based on the law. She and Rayhart can take this to court but she wanted to wrap this mess up ASAP. Her escort came delivering a letter which needed them to change the meeting place at the last minute. Carhan came with his aide and they had a brief introduction. Carhan apologized that he let someone else know their contract but his aide is trustworthy. 
but the aide looks like he will bite at moment's notice. Besides, Ilya's escorts also knew the contract. Tessian isn't pleased about the last-minute location change and Ilya starts to explain about that. The original place is prohibited because it's been designated as a redevelopment zone with a huge sum of compensation. Tessian was shocked and Ilya advised them to get used to this because she is just kinda lucky. Man, such envious luck to have. They started the meeting and Tessian wanted them to terminate the contract. He doesn't want Karhan to be involved in her personal matters. This man is more of a mom than an aide. Ilya started her consulting class, she asked if Karhan hates socializing. Does he really want to be misunderstood for the rest of his life, or it's just Tessian who wanted that? Ilya knows that Tessian is afraid that people will find out Karhan's pushover nature and they can hide it by using the nasty rumors. However, in the long term, it will isolate Karhan from the world. She asked if Karhan really desires the path of isolation for a lifetime. Tessian didn't mean it to be that bad but misunderstandings are scary and Karhan never denied the rumors. In addition, Tessian is taking away any hope that Karhan has to get involved with people. Tessian thought he was protecting Karhan. The young duke is someone who prioritized taking care of others despite the harsh environments. Even when Tessian was nearly killed by an enemy, he was saved by Karhan. Karhan was the only one who risked his life to save him. That's why Tessian tried to protect him from being manipulated by others, he just didn't want Karhan to be in danger. Karhan thanked him and firmly stated that he will make his own decisions from now on. Karhan apologized for relying on Tessian too much and will try to change. Tessian finally understood that everything he did was for his own self-satisfaction. And that's how Tessian joined the Ilya fan club. However, bad habits are hard to change. Tessian is still firm to his beliefs that Karhan hates sweets and blocks Ilya's milk tea offer. Ilya thought he liked sweets because he enjoyed the milk tea last time and apologized. With all bravery, Karhan admitted that he likes sweets. Tessian was having the shock of his life again. He asked when did this uwu looking man like sweets? Karhan liked them for some while, just nobody recommended it for him. Tessian himself found it shocking that he is unaware of his lord's tastes even after serving him for such a long time. He asked how she found out and Ilya said by reading his expression. Tessian was silent and looked at that stoic expression of his lord. Nope, he still can't tell. After that, Ilya explained the contents of the contract to Tessian. The aide wanted to know more regarding the fake lover's clause. Everyone knows that being lovey-dovey isn't Karhan's forte. Ilya started by asking if Karhan had a love life in the past. Of course, he doesn't. In fact, everyone in the room are all inexperienced men. Ilya realized that she is the only hope right now but her brother would say otherwise. Ilya takes in consideration of Karhan's lack of acting skills and comes to the conclusion that they should have a date. And this was how this line of mother duck and little ducklings were made. Ilya was also clueless on what to do on a date. Previous dates with Rayhart are always operas and shopping for men's clothes, geez, he's just using her money. Speaking of clothes, Ilya commented that Karhan isn't wearing the clothes she picked. The duke sweated and Tessian looked away. Before they go shopping, Ilya wanted them to call each other by names because that's how lovers are. Our teddy bear was so shocked that his barriers came off, but he will do his best. Ilya knew why Tessian blocked people who approached the young duke. This furball is just too shy and cute. She wonders if it would be better if the rumors will tone down a bit and only make him seem like a normal bad guy. What does shopping feel like when you are with a wealthy person? You get the best high-quality service you've ever had. The store manager greeted the couple and nearly greeted Rayhart's name but it wasn't him. She nearly made the mistake of her life because she was so used to it being Rayhart. The manager professionally saved her blunder. After the couple went to browse by themselves, the employees let out a breath of relief. It seems that they are also afraid of our poor teddy bear. Ilya read Karhan's expression like a pro that even the manager was confused. Even his deciding face is making people pee their pants. But not RMC here, she is just wanting to know his color tastes. Though he is unsure of that bold color, she will buy it anyway. Karhan frantically stopped her from buying him even more clothes and would like to buy her clothes instead. 
She looked at the cute teddy bear seriously picking her clothes. He came up with a pretty light blue dress. This was the first time someone picked out clothes for her. Just how much of a trash bag can Ray Hart be? He is just a narcissist through and through. She started to tear up and Carhan thought she hated it. But Ilya genuinely likes the dress that he picked. He also had never heard someone praise him like that and was happy. With that, they will change into the clothes they picked for each other. Ilya was slightly shocked that he could make that expression. It's like playing a game of finding hidden pictures when she's with Carhan. Thus, we feast our eyes on the fashion show. First, it's Carhan who had a beautiful white and black themed outfit. Everyone was smitten with this daddy. Our MC complimented this daddy and the daddy smiled beautifully. He is also happy that the light blue and black themed dress he chose suited Ilya. They are such a wholesome couple. This time, Carhan wanted to pay again and Ilya felt deja vu. He wanted to repay her because she is always footing the bill. Nevertheless, Ilya announced that she owns this store and the young duke dropped his wallet. Carhan is still processing the fact that he suddenly got a free wardrobe from his sugar mommy. Suddenly, Ilya noticed that Rayhart's outfit last time was from this store. The manager said that he is a frequent visitor. Wow, it's amazing that this dude has such thick skin to still be using Ilya's facilities. Our girl announced that all members of the Taroyan family including Rayhart are prohibited from entering the shop. Actually, she could still let them enter but instead of free goodies, they need to pay like normal customers. They came back to see Ilya's escort knight and Carhan's aide praising their respective masters. The two look like they're arguing if pineapple pizza is good or no pineapple ha. Huh? Ilya stopped the clash of the fan clubs and invited everyone for an early dinner. Ilya let Carhan choose his menu first but the man is having a food dilemma. It's hard to choose what you want after having people choose for you all your life. Ilya wanted to expose him to different situations to help him express his opinions without getting discouraged. Ilya asked about his smiling homework and gave some advice on how to smile nicely. The food was served but it was served to the wrong customer. The server thought Ilya ordered the salad but instead she ordered the steak. Then the remaining salad belongs to this Yakuza-looking man behind him. The server apologized with all his might and the Yakuza wanted to cry. He needs more practice it seems. However, the Yakuza is a gentleman through and through as he will cut Ilya's steak for her. It was also evenly cut. This feels like we're on a real date right Carhan, our girl is pleased with this boyfriend act. If this was what dating is, Carhan wanted to do it better next time. Our MC wanted him to start by calling her by her name and the man dropped his utensils. It seems that he needs more practice on this also. Red on the face, Carhan will do his best. After eating, Carhan expressed his worries if he made her uncomfortable. Yet, Ilya's evaluation of him was fairly good, he can change if he keeps this up. She also wanted to help him more, which led to another assignment. She wanted him to bring the most useless thing he recently bought, even better if he hadn't touched the package. As to what she wants him to do with it, she will explain next time they meet. After Ilya left, Tessian commented that Ilya seems like a good person, and his master smiled and agreed. Tessian came to decline the contract but was convinced instead. However, the Evanthean won't be pleased of Carhan's change. They wanted a lord who was easy to manipulate and the Duke and Duchess chose Delota because of money. Ahem, RMC has more money than Delota. Anyways, ignoring all the headaching political stuff, Carhan would like to read his love for dummies guidebooks that he got from Ilya. In an alleyway, a certain lady noticed Lady Delota's fiancé seeing off Ilya. At the same time, the Bloden family, minus Ilya, are having a roundtable meeting. The agenda was Ilya's new boyfriend, Carhan Evanthean. After the worrisome Rayhard route, there's a dangerous Yakuza route after. Haley gathered a whole pile of information, all of Carhan's information is from his battlefield achievements, and his private life is shrouded in a mystery. Carhan participated in the war when he was 14. Even if he's the second son, it's rare for them to send him to war unless he's mentally unstable as no one wants to die on the battlefield. A bloodthirsty killer, and the man who dragged his brother down out of ambition. The Bloden family became silent. Why would their precious Ilya fall for someone like him? 
The mom asked if anyone here had met Carhan personally and they shook their heads. Though rumors can be exaggerated but where there's smoke there's fire, they're worried that Carhan is bullying Ilya. The dad suggested a castle as a breakup fee, the brother wanted to tell Ilya about the rumors but she already knew, and going on a hunger strike isn't healthy. The worst thing is, what if Ilya locks herself up in her room again if they want her to break up? They are such a good family to Ilya indeed. Lastly, they will personally confirm what kind of person the young duke is. The next day, Ilya is reading the pile of letters she ignored. However, most of them are telling her to invest in their business, and that Lord Taroyan recommended her to them. This dude is still treating her like his own personal ATM machine. Ilya thought about what to do with her life right now. She wanted to do business because it's so much fun when she participated in her parents' business. Suddenly, a servant brought a huge rose bouquet and letters from the Taroyan family. The letter wanted her to go to the Taroyan household to discuss unfinished matters and the flowers are Rayhart's feelings. Our MC wanted to puke a rainbow vomit. She is baffled that he wants her to go to him instead of vice versa. Ilya stepped on the bouquet and ordered for it to be burned at once. Also, she wanted the servant to deliver the message, if Rayhart wants to see her, he needs to follow her instructions. Two days later, Ilya came to the Taroyan household in all black. She gave the permission to her escort knights to attack Rayhart if he tries something to her. They went in and Rayhart was happy to see her but he was blocked by the two angry escorts. Ilya slapped the break-off agreement on the table and demanded him to sign it. Rayhart questions if Ilya is really serious about this. Our female lead firmly crushed any escape route he had. The trash tried reasoning with Ilya using Carhan's dark rumors. Lastly, he used his ultimate skill, you are just using Carhan to make me jealous attack. Our MC and her guards wanted to barf. The shameless trash told her that she's his first love and they were meant to be. Before everything happened, Ilya thought the same too. He saved her and they share similarities with each other. She thought they were a perfect couple but soon countless women started hovering around him. Our MC gave up everything she loved for him and maybe deep down, she knows she's already unhappy. After that, you know what happened after she visited the fortune teller. Seeing his ATM machine ain't happy with his reminiscence tactics, he kneeled and begged for forgiveness. Yet, our MC is firm on letting him sign it. The red flag got angry and tore the contract. I already said I'm sorry. Ilya, you'll regret this, do you know how deadly rumors are in high society? The trash threatened. Clearly, this trash is just, a trash. Luckily our MC didn't give in, and threw him a few more extra contracts. You were the one who cheated first. She told him to expect the worst if he keeps this up as she will make him beg her to break off the engagement. She also forbids him from using her name anymore. A few days later, Ilya is feeling refreshed after letting all her frustrations out. She met her brother while walking down the hallway. Our girl accidentally blurted out that she's meeting Karhan right now and frantically tried to explain. She proposes having a meal together so that she can explain in detail and the brother accepts the meal invitation. Before she left, Haley suggested she take an umbrella with her as it's going to rain soon. Apparently, Haley has been standing there since morning to tell his sister about the weather forecast but only the readers know about this, such a cute brother indeed. That cute sundry bro will also head out for investigations. As expected for the Ilya's luck buffs, the meeting place this time was also a no-go as there were too many customers. She spotted Carhan in the midst and yanked him out of there. The man brought the assignment she asked last time. The assignment today is for Carhan to refund this by himself. And so, our teddy bear met his hardest mission ever. He marched himself to war and the staff nearly peed their pants. The more experienced manager came to serve the teddy bear. Because Carhan was panicking, his speech and thoughts were exchanged, as he annoyingly said, this is driving me crazy, instead of the thing he wanted to say. The atmosphere instantly darkened. He recalled Ilya's teachings on easing his tension and organizing his thoughts. He did everything based on the teachings but it didn't turn out nicely. The manager thought that he was going to meet his maker and apologized for all his sins. Poor Teddy Bear had it rough, he doesn't know where he did wrong. At that time, he heard knocks on the glass and Ilya cheering him on. Carhan doesn't want to disappoint her expectations. 
He tried again, this time he succeeded. Though, the staffs are still scared of him but it ended nicely. However, one staff member just had to call the police. Meanwhile, Carhan got extra freebies from that refund, he should do more refunds in the future LMAO. Ilya complimented him on a job well done. It was rough, but he at least had the courage to try. The teddy bear let the compliments soak in, and with a gentle smile, he will do it better next time. Ignoring the wholesome moment, the police came and started apprehending Karhan. They are here to capture the Yakuza leader. Our MC stopped them because they were arresting Karhan without any evidence. The police had judged Karhan by his appearance only and demanded an ID card. Our MC wanted to argue further but Karhan stopped her. She's annoyed that they are branding him a criminal based on appearance alone. To make matters worse, Karhan forgot to bring his ID card. The head police ain't giving this criminal teddy bear any leeway and Karhan is once apprehended. Although it isn't Ilya's style, she threatened them with a salary cut. The head guard doesn't seem phased as he has a lot of noble sponsorships. Oh, even if that sponsorship is from Bloden? The head guard flinched and took in Ilya's appearance and her escort knight's sword symbol. Their salaries were mostly sponsored by the Bloden family. It was at this time the head guard knew his salary was fricked. He immediately did a 90 degree bow and apologized. Our MC scolded him for judging people by appearance and mentioned that Karhan is the young Duke Evan Theon. The guards were fricked once more and vehemently apologized. Afterwards, our MC tried to comfort Karhan, but the man had it even worse when he first came back from the battlefield. Even when he casually strolled down the streets, he will get caught for inspections. Compared to those times, this time he has Ilya by his side, of course. He blamed himself for not bringing his ID card in the first place. Ilya unwaveringly claims that it's not his fault and she will help him all the way. Meanwhile, in the shadows of the alleyway and unaware of the true wholesome story behind, Haley judged everything on the surface. Carhan left his sister outside the scorching sun to buy shoes for himself, reckless spending habits, and moreover, having his sister handle his guard problems. Haley judged this male lead, unworthy. The aggressive stalker makes her appearance again she was promoting her family tea to her friends. The friends showered her with compliments and wanted her to share her love life. The girl hasn't really dated Carhan, and their engagements are still in the talks but she cannot blurt that out. Her friends compared Carhan with a male lead in the novel who was only nice to the female lead. This story is what Stella had in mind with Carhan. He might be cold at first but she will eventually own him. Girl, the teddy bear is literally scared of you for real. Anyways, a lady said she witnessed Carhan with a woman and the stalker spat her tea. She awkwardly asked who it was and the lady said it was Lady Bloden. The stalker became aggressive once more. She will immediately head to the Evanthian mansion. At the same time, Ilya is telling Carhan about her incident with Rayhard a few days ago. Looking at the annoyed Ilya, Carhan asks if he can help with anything. Ilya told him that Rayhard might interfere from Carhan's side, therefore, their relationship needed to be stronger. As Rayhart will keep tabs on Carhan for now, she suggested to inform both their families and spread the rumors externally. Ilya informed that her family already knows about Carhan, although they seemed hesitant but Ilya will make it work. She then proceeded to ask Carhan if he informed his family about her and his face horrified. Hesitantly, Carhan said that he will tell them eventually. Ilya noticed that every time she mentioned his family, his expression sank. She's curious but she will respect his boundaries. It was really pouring outside but our MC left her umbrella in the carriage. Now, they only have two umbrellas and five people. Her quick-witted knight grabbed all the knights with him, leaving Ilya with Carhan together. Our male lead invited Ilya under his umbrella like a true gentleman. So the couple acted out a very beautiful sharing umbrella scene. Suddenly, our MC noticed that Carhan's other shoulder was soaked. On the contrary she is as dry as a desert. What if you catch a cold? Ilya tilted the umbrella to his side. He tilted it back to her while mentioning that he's rarely sick and would like her to stay dry. Our girl moved closer to him and the man felt butterflies in his stomach. He safely escorted her into her carriage and Ilya's feeling guilty that she got the special treatment. Karhan hesitated for a while and with a gentle smile, he thanked her and called her name. 
After that he looked away shyly. Ilya laughed and said that it was the first time he called her name by himself. Then, she bid farewell to Karhan. After she left, the man felt his heart rate skyrocketed. Inside his carriage, Tessian gave him his change of clothes. As he took off his wet attire, his body was filled with scars he got from war. He recalled today's events, so much happened within half a day. He enjoys the new experiences and the changes of his routine, but can he enjoy himself shamelessly? He is scared that his secret will leak out. Tessian assured him that he is the Evanthian successor. However, his family wants his brother to be the successor. He felt suffocating. And to add to that suffocation, the aggressive stalker is waiting for him at his house. This is one angry stalker lady. The stalker demanded his previous whereabouts. Tessian tried to counter the stalker but she countered back. But with Karhan's fierce expression, the stalker didn't dare to go too far. Karhan walked up the stairs and she followed suit. After reaching the front porch, he asked her the reason for coming here. The stalker girled up and pictured herself as the confident female lead in the novel. She confronted him about being with Ilya Bloden. Accompanied with the flash of lightning, he admitted that it's true. Karhan admitted it once more and wanted the engagement talks to be dissolved. They had an argument in front of the door, to which the Duchess came out to see what the commotion was about. Here, we get to clearly see what the mother who failed her motherly job and is biased, looks like. The biased mother asked what's wrong and the stalker cried her sorrows to that duchess, like she always did, this is also why Karhan dislikes her. The sly stalker knows who to complain for Karhan to be silenced. The biased mother told the stalker to go home because she will straighten her hated child. The duchess bis slapped Karhan and reprimanded him for being a disgrace to the family. She doesn't need him to be like his brother but she wants him to be a puppet to their despicable selves. The brother's name is, Blade. To all Honkai Star Rail players out there, I love Blade and this storyline is making me feel bad. Anyways, Blade caused an incident and was exiled but the mom still loves her troublemaker son. The engagement of Karhan is to rectify the actions of her troublemaker son. Poor innocent teddy bear Karhan. In contrast to the angsty event at Karhan's, our MC Ilya is having a bubble bath and gleefully thinking about her teddy bear. After that, she was called to dine with her Titan family who wanted some answers. Before transitioning into Ilya's interrogation, the parents had to reprimand the elder son first. The son did his job in retaliating back. At a side, Ilya wondered if she wanted to discuss her business ventures once the engagement issue was solved. After the small prologue of family matters, they transition towards Ilya and young Duke Evan Theon, I swear, her family is so wholesome. Her father started to ask how they met. Ilya already had this planned and said they fell in love at first sight. The father gets it but he is curious what she liked about the man. Ilya blatantly said Karhan is kind and Haley broke his plate. She continued marveling Karhan's kindness and corrected the rumors. However, according to Haley's report which, he's unaware of the inside story, Karhan is just a scumbag that's just relatively better than Rayhart. The mom got into business and asked why she broke up with Rayhart. Ilya considered all her safety net. She told them Rayhart cheated on her. Thunder and lightning struck the family, they stood up and were ready to declare war on the Taroyan family. Luckily our MC prevented the unnecessary bloodshed. Ilya didn't tell them because of the annoyingly higher social status of the Taroyans, but most importantly, she was afraid of hurting her family. They hated Rayhart but still wished Ilya to marry happily, yet, her happiness was shattered, if her family knew the truth, they would feel her too. That's why she doesn't want to burden them. Ilya wanted to resolve this herself. Her sweet family told her not to apologize and they are always by her side. She told the fam that she and Karhan will find a way to solve this. Rayhart cannot act openly because he's cautious of the Evanthean. The family formed a small circle of three and discussed giving Karhan another chance. Then, Haley said that they will let Ilya take care of her engagement herself. Only after then, the Bloden family will express dissatisfaction to Rayhart. But that aside, they want to meet Karhan personally. With that, the young teddy bear was invited to dine with the Titan family. And to make a good first impression, the teddy bear ventured out to find gifts for the Titans. 
During the gift venture, every gift they came across was owned by the Bloden family. Even the pretty box that suited Ilya was owned by Ilya herself. Buying gifts for a family that practically owns the whole shopping district is surely a hard task. Tessian asked what Ilya likes, Karhan recalled her drinking the whole bottle of alcohol at the party. Thus, they ventured to the liquor store. Though Karhan nearly caused another pants peeing event, his aide saved the day. Karhan wanted to ask for some alcohol recommendation and once again, nearly made the employee pee himself. However, Karhan managed to tone down and said what he wanted to say, resulting in the employee understanding his personality better. Nevertheless, our male leads still cannot reject extra recommendations. After that, the teddy bear and his aide bought health supplements for the Bloden family. Behind the two, a certain red trash was kicked out of a store. The trash did the typical, do you know who I am, statement. Just like what Ilya ordered, the Taroyans were forbidden from entering the clothing store. The staff noticed Karhan a few feet away, they wondered why the young duke never stopped by the clothing store. Saying that in front of the trash made the trash angry for real. Then came the day where Karhan and Tessian visits the Bloden estate. They marveled that the garden so huge. Five minutes later, they are still in that said garden or forest to be exact. Thirty minutes later, still the same. An hour later, finally they will pass through the entrance of the real garden. It was a real eye-opening for this little bear and his aide. Ilya greeted the two tired men, Tessian thought they were stranded for real. And here we have a picture of the main gate and the Bloden estate. They were already fortunate that the estate was built in the center, if it's built at the end, it would really be a two-hour ride. Karhan gifted Ilya a beautiful flower bouquet and thanked her for the invitation. Our girl happily accepted this token of appreciation from this cute bear. With that, she probably invited her guests to her rich abode which even has a fountain inside the mansion. In addition, the paintings on the wall are enough to open an art gallery. Tessian recognized a painting to be from a genius artist several hundred years ago, they have the same one too, but this one is especially detailed. It turns out that this painting right here is the true original work from that artist that's worth billions. Karhan started to feel guilty as his gift is perhaps too modest. Before they meet the family, Ilya informs them that her family is a bit unusual. Though I would prefer to say that they are just very protective towards our MC, which may ask difficult questions to Karhan. Our girl told her fake lover to not be nervous because she is here with him. Then came the trial of Titans. The location the trial starts is in the intimidating armory room and an intimidating greeting from Ilya's father. Next is the mom greeting them with a real sword at hand. Then came the intimidating glasses character pose from Haley. Karhan felt like he entered the barracks of the enemy general and Ilya was speechless. She didn't expect her family to greet him with sunshine and flowers but to think they would roleplay as enemy generals is making her head throb. She poked Karhan for a reply greeting as the man flinched. Karhan's greeting felt like a robotic AI from the olden days. The fans started discussing amongst each other that Karhan is indeed a dangerous man even though he's just a teddy bear. He was invited to sit and Ilya noticed the seating was like an interview desk with only Karhan sitting opposite from them. Our MC ordered for her seat to be next to the teddy bear. The teddy bear brandished the gifts he brought, which consisted of wine and health supplements. I should restore my health after damaging it, is what the brother dissed. The father announced that he quitted drinking yesterday, even though he just had a bottle of wine last night. Before the mom could deal the finishing blow, Ilya announced that she will eat it all. She saved the day but the teddy bear already has 1 HP. Ilya glared at her family and they looked away. Finally, the father thanked Karhan for the gifts and the teddy bear is on full HP again, which made them kinda guilty and awkward. Nevertheless, the mom is unfazed, she asks what he loves about Ilya. Our MC dreaded not preparing this script for Karhan. Lady Ilya's smile was beautiful, the man sincerely said, he doesn't need a script to begin with. The family was happy with that answer. Ilya was relieved that she gave him dating books to study. However, it's too early to let their guard down. Although Ilya pointed out that Karhan is nice and polite, her brother still isn't convinced, because she also used nearly the same words when she brought back Rayhart. 
Haley wanted to know about Carhan being in the battlefield, if the rumors are true then he must have a strong sense of pride and self-esteem. Ilya reprimanded Haley from being insensitive but Haley insisted on wanting to know Carhan's true nature. I volunteered for war, there aren't any particularly interesting stories. It was a battlefield. Carhan recalled his bad memories but said less. Haley was surprised with the few words. He went for the straight ball and mentioned the rumors. Tessian tried to help correct the misunderstandings, he said that Carhan saved his life and hundreds of people's. Even so, that touching speech didn't faze the family. They asked what rank Carhan was discharged with. Carhan was just an officer when discharged, a big question mark surfaced and even Ilya was shocked at how low rank he's discharged with. The fam started to whisper if he had other motives but Ilya warned them with her glare to not continue probing. And so, they headed to dinner. The vegetarian teddy bear looked at the meat dishes in front of him, hesitant on what to do. Ilya noticed this and gave the vegetarian bear his veggies. I am profoundly surprised that he can grow that buff with veggies. The family was shocked once more. Suddenly a maid who was distracted accidentally dropped the scalding hot soup towards Ilya. With godly reflexes, the herbivore jumped to her rescue and the hot soup was poured on his shoulder. Are you okay? Both of them shouted in unison to each other and the maid apologized. After that, Ilya left the dinner table to help with Karhan's wound. The family was worried but they are thankful for Karhan who shielded their beloved Ilya. The doctor who came was startled when he was called to tend to this strong-looking carnivore instead of Ilya. The doctor told Karhan to take off his clothes and Ilya turned away. It was a mild burn which won't leave a scar. After that, the doctor wanted to apply the ointment with his hands trembling, Ilya abruptly turned and wanted to help instead. The bear instinctively covered his bare chest and they had a shy moment. The doctor was sold by this romance story. Lastly, Ilya got the ointment and the doctor left the lovebirds. Ilya was overwhelmed by the amount of scars the young duke had. She felt bad because he fought hard to protect, yet all he got was being misunderstood. She applied the ointment and the man jolted. Our MC frantically apologized and Carhan secretly endured the embarrassing and heart-racing moment. Ilya apologized once more and Carhan told her that it doesn't hurt much so don't feel guilty. She chuckled and finished bandaging his injury. Ilya offered to bring him new clothes and finish their dinner here. After finishing their simple dinner together, they went to have a stroll in the garden. She complimented him and apologizes if her family is aggressive to him. The man couldn't deny that he is indeed afraid of them. However, he knows that they are just worried for her, Carhan is only scared if he made any mistake or not. Our MC deemed him Angel Carhan from now on. She will make sure nothing like this will happen in the future. She complimented him on a job well done once more and the man's heart skipped a beat. Carhan mentioned that he has something to tell her as well. He said that his aggressive stalker came to his house a few days ago and asked about their relationship. Carhan said that he managed to learn how to reject someone, even though that didn't even work a slightest bit, well, at least he tried. Carhan said that he didn't have the chance to mention their relationship with his family. The man is envious of Ilya's relationship with her family, it looked very harmonious to him. Ilya recalled that Carhan isn't on good terms with his family but to be honest, Ilya didn't always have a harmonious relationship with her fam either. Ilya invited him to walk with her beside a pond with lotuses, she said that this is her favorite place. There was a point in life where she's afraid of water but she is okay now. Ilya stepped into the pond and told Carhan her story of almost drowning. She almost died in a pond but was saved by Rayhart. She loved him so much back then that all she could talk about was him. She thought he loved her too but then the affair happened. Our MC realized that he only loved her wealth, she had the wealth to buy everything but never truly obtained what she desires with money. Not the reconciliation with her family, not the trust of her knights, not even the heart of the one she loves. She would rather Rayhart ask for more compensation than play with her heart. She wondered, if it was someone other than Rayhart who saved her back then, would she love that person? Carhan asked if she still likes Rayhart, our MC replied that she would cut Rayhart's hands off if he fell into a lake. Ilya invited Carhan to sit beside her by the pond, and the man sat beside her. Ilya felt like this is a little date between them, 
she isn't too sure as she never had small dates with Ray Hart before. However, right now, she truly felt like in a relationship. She felt nice even if it's just a short dream. After that, Tessian who nearly got lost, finally found the couple. He is odd that nobody gets lost here, but people do get lost, that's why everyone has an emergency flair with them. Moreover, there are also hired staff who are tasked to collect lost servants. Suddenly, Ilya was called by her mom, and Tessian said to just go because he remembers the way out. While heading to the entryway, Ilya's father stopped them in their tracks. The count had a gentle dark smile plastered on. He asked about Karhan's wounds and after confirming that he is indeed treated, the father sincerely bowed and thanked Karhan. The count is open to any repayment that Karhan wants and the man politely declines. Then, the atmosphere became awkward once more. Karhan tried imitating Ilya's social skills and complimented the random painting behind the count. This made the count immensely blissful and would like to hear his reviews in detail. The said painting only had two lines and Karhan dreaded how he was going to decipher this. His teddy bear brain ran a marathon and came out with a review of the line representing two swords. The count explained that this line represents good and evil which cannot intersect, yet coexist in the same space. Though, the bear only saw two simple lines lol. Then came another painting the count showed. Thanks to his aid, Karhan managed to gain the count's favor. The count would like to have a deeper discussion with Karhan during his next exhibition hosting. The teddy bear wanted to decline but his words were stuck in his throat. The bear gave the white flag. As the young duke was leaving the mansion, he took one last look at this strange world he visited. The family that quarrels but treasures each other, all these fluffy experiences made him want to linger here longer. Alas, he needed to go back to his own reality. Few days later, Ilya came to the bank to get her account statement updated, her whole wealth was too big of an amount that the bank employee had to just tell her the current real-time amount instead of all her lifetime cash. There were so many numbers that even her nights nearly went gaga. Ilya expanded her underground vault by two more cells. She then treated her nights to some fine desserts. While she's pondering on a new business venture, someone called her. It was Siona Taroyan, Ray Hart's older sister. She wanted to go shopping and wanted Ilya to follow. Our MC wondered if she was unaware of Ilya and Ray Hart's breakup. Ilya told her knights to wait here while she sets things straight with the trash sister. The trash sister wanted to buy baby products in advance for her soon-to-have pregnancy. The moment the employees saw the trash sister, they dreaded the fact that the Karen's here. That Karen who opens products without buying them and slash prices as she pleases is here. However, the Karen announced that she will buy all the products she saw last time. She is very sure that her ATM machine still functions, huh? The employee brought all the products and the Karen had some beef to pick with this cheap stroller. She demanded a more expensive one. The Karen came towards the new stroller and opened the packaging again, much to the staff's dismay. The Karen would like to buy everything. The price is 10,572,000 crowls, the Karen looked at her ATM machine to cough out cash. The ATM machine will only pay for a small toy for her puppy and the Karen was astonished that Ilya didn't pay for her. Ilya said that she should pay for it herself and the Karen is confused about the sudden personality change. We'll soon be a family and you can't even pay this much? The Karen's shamelessness transcends all beings. Ilya coldly said that she had no intention to become family with her and would like to resign from being their wallet. The Karen threatened to tell Rayhart and Ilya spilled the beans that she is breaking up the engagement anyways. Ilya left and the Karen tried to wiggle away too but was stopped by the employee. People started to gather around and talk, it was a shameful day for the Karen. Ilya sighed and was pissed that the red flag didn't even mention the breakup to his family. She will gladly give him a light push and publish the breakup in the daily news. The next day, Ilya noticed Karhan studying history art for dummies. She invited him to see her father's art exhibition, and both Karhan and Tessian's atmosphere dropped several degrees. Today, they are going to let Karhan practice rejecting someone. Could you lend me some money? Ilya acted a Nobel winning act. The man instantly fished out his wallet and the girl exclaimed for him to reject her. Karhan told her that he cannot reject her no matter how hard her request is and Ilya felt another doki doki. She told him to be the one asking instead. 
Before he could finish his sentence, it was instantly rejected by sassy Ilya. The bear was instantly dejected. Ilya told him he can help them if he wants to but if they still keep asking after he rejects. She wants him to tell them to get the fuck off. Ilya teaches him that they are bad people in this world and that he doesn't need to be nice to everyone. It's important that people don't fear you, but it's even more important for you to not get hurt. Our MC has three stages in Karhan's education. First is for people to stop fearing him or avoid him, next is that Karhan can express his opinions and third, he doesn't feel guilty for rejecting others. Ilya said if he feels bad about rejection, then be the bad guy instead. Karhan will do his best. Then he was immediately thrown into real target practice. Ten minutes ago, Ilya spotted a supposed missionary while thinking about Karhan's target practice. She instantly pushed the man into action. The missionary complimented Karhan's extraordinary energy and started his preaching. Our male lead instantly shot him down, there was a moment of silence between them with Karhan's overly anxious heart drumming. The missionary counterattack and the plan backfired. Before the preaching could start, Karhan clenched his fist which scared the missionary. Karhan firmly stated that they are busy, however, the missionary isn't called a missionary for no reason, he is a man on a mission. He spotted an easier target, Ilya, and tried to preach to her instead. This made Karhan's protective instincts kicked in as the man grabbed the missionary's shoulder. I recommend you shut up while I'm still talking nicely, the voice of Satan threatened, and the missionary ran for his life. Karhan asked his teacher for a review, the teacher was very much pleased. The man bestowed her a smile that even he himself doesn't know he had. Ilya asked what was he thinking when he smiled like that, the man recalled his baby girl smiling and blushed. He said that he recalled a puppy he raised during childhood. Ilya came closer and told him to imagine the puppy playing with him whenever she says the word, puppy. She immediately put it to the test and the man smiled. He doesn't get it but if Ilya's happy he's happy. The scene skips to the red trash messing up his room and throwing stuff. A few hours ago, his sister came to ask him about the engagement. He is at a loss of what to do. Then, he was called to meet his father. He was slapped with newspapers concerning the breakup. The father wanted answers on this. Rayhart got down on his knees and begged for help. Confirming that he hasn't talked with other Bloden members, the father will need to step up and talk to Haley Bloden. Meanwhile, at Carhan's room. His aide is so proud of him for rejecting the missionary just now. He felt like his supposed son had grown up. Tessian is truly grateful to Ilya and Carhan smiled. Carhan is also proud that he is capable of such a feat, it's all thanks to Ilya. When he was a bear cub, a servant complimented him for being kind when he shared his desserts with them. He thought that by being kind, his mother would like him. So, he clung onto this small compliment like an obsession, and it locked him inside. He wanted his mother to love him, but he only received a cold stare in return. It was a gaze that's looking at something sickening, he doesn't know when it started but his mother hated him to the bone. He wondered what he did wrong so he wrote an apology letter and picked flowers. But all his letters and flowers ended up in the trash. Despite that, he still clung to the hope, unable to break free. Until, Ilya told him that it's important for him not to get hurt pleasing others. Karhan wanted to meet his mother right now. That mother was reading the newspaper about Ilya's breakup with Rayhart when she heard door knocks. She was taken aback that Karhan came to seek for her by himself. He said that it's something important so he needs to say it face to face. The door opened slightly and Karhan told her that he's seeing someone new instead of Stella Delota. The Duchess lashed out but upon hearing that it's Ilya Bloden, she stopped. No matter how much wealth Delota may have, they can't match the Bloden family. She complimented Carhan and would like him to invite Ilya Bloden over. So, it's Ilya's turn to see Carhan's family, she felt a little nervous. But before that, she will need to meet the aggressive stalker who's arriving as we speak. Because the aggressive lady waited a few while and got no response to enter the Bloden estate, the lady aggressively snapped. They told her that they took a shortcut so the signal should be coming soon and Stella shockingly wondered why an estate needed a shortcut. Thus, they were told to wait a bit. Although the Duchess said she will help her, this aggressive lady cannot stay still after hearing Carhan admit his relationship with Ilya. 
Soon, they got a fireworks signal as an entry signal and Stella's attendant was jaw-dropped. Stella isn't fond of a long wait and said that the Bloaton lacks basic manners. While going through the forest, she snarkily commented that the Bloaton estate isn't too impressive as it was filled with trees. She said that the Delota garden was better. But that was what she thought until they reached the real garden. The aggressive lady snapped once again. Suddenly, she spotted a greenhouse at a distance that was bigger than hers. She dashed to check it out, leaving her attendant behind. Stella claims that her house owns the prettiest garden after the Imperial Palace, and she cannot let Ilya Bloden win her in this aspect. While looking around the greenhouse, she finds an unfamiliar pretty flower with crimson petals that resemble her eye color. The flower's fragrance is even better than her perfume. She scans around for any human presence, and like a thief, pockets some of those flowers for her own greenhouse. After happily stealing some flowers and wanting to go back, she realized that she's lost. Rushing through the endless and scary forest, she shouted for someone to help her. Luckily, she was saved by a servant who heard her screams and was brought to Ilya. Stella annoyingly complained that she nearly died and sat on the opposite sofa. She quickly got into business with Ilya about the young Duke Evanthean and Ilya admitted their relationship as well. Stella shouted that Ilya was shameless for stealing Karhan when she herself has a fiancé. Ilya asked if Stella had seen the newspapers these days about their breakup. Stella scoffed and said if Ilya wants to find another fling, she should find it somewhere else but don't flirt with her man. Ilya asked if she truly loved the young duke. Does that matter? It's just a political marriage anyway. Stella rolled her eyes. And I will leave you here, this stopped at chapter 33. Why not check out other stories as well? Thanks for dropping by.